As seen in the previous diagram, Chris divides the snowboard into four equal quadrants along its longitudinal and lateral axis. To initiate a toe side turn, first flex the front ankle bringing the front knee down and over the working edge thus applying pressure into quadrant one. Complete the toe side turn by repeating with the rear ankle thus applying pressure into quadrant two. Once the desired turn shape and direction has been attained, simply relax and move back into the rider's neutral stance. Demonstrating the hillside turn fundamentals is similar, just shifting weight towards the hillside quadrants number three and four. Chris suggests introducing edge control by assisting the student in a hillside skid followed by a toe side skid. He does this by instructing the student to get low, sitting back over their heels while lifting their toes and keep the rear end back and shoulders forward. Then he gently pulls the student while the student learns to use pressure, keeping the toe side edge from digging into the snow and also preventing that fateful head digger. The opposite technique is used to introduce toe side pressuring to the student. Here we'll do his toe side first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand behind him here, give him a little push, get him going, have him squish both tongues of his boots. And what we're doing, keep squishing a little bit more, extend those hips a little bit, extend those hips a little bit. There, now I stop him and I show him this track that he just made. It's a perfect carved track. We want him to taste that, right? The next thing I do, I'll turn him around. So now I get him on his heels, right? Same thing, I'm gonna stand here so I can get behind him and catch him. Like I like to have a hip available. So if he falls backwards, I can get my hip into him rather than trying, if I'm standing over here in front of him, if he falls backwards, he pulls me down with him and yanks my arms really hard and my, it hurts my back. So get your shoulders forward, rear end back, squish the heels, lift those toes and try to hold that. Keep going a little bit more. Tip that board a little bit more. Tip that board, there we go. There we go. And then I stop him and I show him his track. Now the last thing that I like to do with him is I like to get him to link a couple turns with me towing him. And then I like to steer him into a skidded stop. That's what I like to do. So I'll take him like this and I'll tell him the whole joystick routine again. Remember the joysticks? You get low, tip this joystick forward towards the toes. We're gonna go to the toes, right? So let me get you going. So I get him going, right? Now squish the, le squish the right tongue. He starts to turn. Now I say relax, tip the joystick forward, squish the right heel, right? Keep squishing, keep squishing, keep squishing, keep squishing, keep squishing just a little bit. And I get him to, to, do, to get into this position where he makes a little bit of an S. And he starts to feel that. You got one or two students, do it a ton until they're ripping them, right? You become gravity. It's also up to them too, like what they're comfortable with. Are they comfortable with you touching them, right? Okay, so the last thing I'll do is I'll, I'll simulate that J-turn with them, right? So we've got a little bit of a slope right here. So I'm going to use it. Once I have him, for heel side, I'm going to hold his lead hand. I'm going to put my right hand on his shoulder right back here. This way, again, I can get my hip in to catch him, and I can push him. So I get him going. We go straight. Then I tell him to sink onto his heels. I give him a little push, let it slide, and we simulate that, that hard stop right there. From there, I keep him going, and I push him across the hill. And I say, look, I want you to, I want you to be able to go down the hill, turn the board, and then finish across the hill. And so we simulate For that. For toe board. side, it's really, toe side's tricky, it depends on the student, but what I'll do is I'll get him going, so we're going straight. Now I'll tell him to squish the tongue of his boots, give me his hands, push the board away from me. Remember that feeling? Mm -hmm. And we get him to slide and feel that skid, and then I finish going across the hill, and he knows what that's like. Now we've gone straight, we skidded, we traversed, we're making the bottom, we're making the completion phase of a turn really, really well. We also just taught them when we did the little S's, we taught them how to actually initiate through the lead leg. They've got all the tools they need. Yeah. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give everybody a little bit of skating. I told the guys this morning, like, skating should be fun. Skating shouldn't be something that's like, 
all about just moving forward because otherwise why do it it's painful it's tiring it's it's not that exciting unless you make it so so let's do that put your front foot in so far what do your students have in the flats they're learning how to snowboard they have so many fun little jibby tricks like technical board control tricks which are really empowering hand plants especially you will become the hand plant guy for the rest of their life if you teach them a hand plant i promise you that it's the funniest thing but you will be that guy or that gal in kira's case that taught that taught that person how to hand plant on their first day of snowboarding and that's probably the the coolest story they're going to tell all day of, of of the many cool stories they're going to have all right so front foot in so they've got all those tricks they understand their ranges of motion they're not afraid to stand on their snowboard with two feet in. How nice is that, right? Most times in lessons, when they leave this place right here, all they know is how to stand with one foot in. And then they get on the chair and they get to the top and you go, let's put two feet in. Here we go. And they're like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. I've never done this before. Not anymore. Now they've done it, right? But before we get to the chair, they got to know how to skate. They got to know how to get off the chair, on and off the chair. Now, before we get to that point though, we've got a little slope to deal with. Let's learn how to skate a little bit. Let's make it, make it kind of interesting. Everybody balance on your back foot with your foot behind your board on the heel side. Pick the board up, right? Let's hop a little bit. You can try, let's try a little nose, a nose to tail slap. So pick it up, scoop the tail up, slap it down. Go boneless, slap it down. Foot. Play around. Look up at the sky, set your foot down. Slide it against the back binding, find it. Right, do that a few times with your students. Let them find it a few times. Then they can look at it if they want to. Now we're gonna do the next, the next little thing. I want you guys standing on your board to jump up and then absorb the landing, make it really quiet. So jump up and come down, real gentle. Cause we're about to, we're about to do a foot plant onto our board. Put your foot back on your heel side, pick the whole board up, tiny, like one inch off the ground, two inches off the ground, hop up, land soft. If they don't land soft, the board slips like, like stepping on a banana peel. So make sure they land soft. Teach them how to do that. Already they are learning how to, how to shift their weight from one foot to the other with one foot in. It's really important. The key to, the key to skating is that when you push with one foot, the core moves with the snowboard. So as I extend this leg, I'm pushing my core away from that foot. Does that make sense? So that we're teaching them that now very naturally because our next step is... Once they have, we're not even teaching skating yet, we're just teaching little hops, little foot plants. Our next step though is to pick the board up, tip it forward a tiny bit, tip the, lead, the rear joystick and hop on. So if they move three inches forward, you're, it's a win, right? If they just move an inch, that's fine. And they keep doing it until they're comfortable and confident because what are they learning? They're learning how to drive their core towards their front foot with this little hop. And in their mind, they're learning a foot plant, which is a really The next cool thing we might do is do a couple of those in a row. So we'll go foot plant, land, foot plant, land. And by this time, you will generally see people moving around quite comfortably. They'll start to skate. Our next step is to have a little fun with it. So foot on your heel side, point your toes at your tail. Pick the board up, wrap it around, hop up and land on it. Try it a couple times. With your students, you might have them just wrap it around a couple times. So point the toes at the tail, wrap it around. Point the toes of the tail, wrap it around. Now, let's add a little momentum in it to it, okay? So check it out. So if I point down this little hill, I point my toes of my tail. When I pick up, notice my foot's right back by my back binding. That's where you want to plant it. When I pick up my board, I'm going to keep rocking forward so that when I land, I'm gliding. The final step of fun for this, although there's probably many more, simply though, I've got to do a little scissor step. See how my, this foot's behind here? I'm going to push off onto my board, step off, plant my toes forward, pick the board up, and keep going. All right, so the last things we're going to teach them with skating, again, not skate and glide steps because they're not really necessary unless they are necessary, right? Do them if you have to. Don't do them because they're fun because it's not fun to do straight runs and do pick up the suitcases. Let's do the thumpers. I used to do thumpers. Thumpers while you're gliding in a straight run, right? And they help with balance, but it's not that fun, right? So let's have a, let's give them a little bit more control that actually will feel good to them. So now we're going to skate. We'll skate straight a little bit. Then I'm going to use my lead leg. And I'm going to turn my board and I'm going to turn it sideways and see if I can skid it a little bit. 
Once I got that, I'll skate again a little bit, and I'll turn the board, and I'll skid it a little bit. And I'll do it again. I'll skate up here, I'll turn it, and I'll skid it a little bit. See if you guys can do that. Because when they go from here down to the chair, it's easier for them to skid than it is for them to sidestep. If you don't, if you don't use your opportunities here to teach them things that they need out there, they are not going to learn it in the battlefield. They're going to learn bad habits in the battlefield. In here, they can learn whatever you want them to learn. Why? They're not scared. The biggest fear in here, I said earlier, is that they have their fear of looking stupid. Right? That's the biggest fear in here. They're not worried about slamming into that building or getting hit by another skier. Right? They're just out here, relaxed, doing what you ask of them. And now they've got tools. We might want to do it on the toe side a little bit too, so turn the board and see if you can skid it. Right? And then skate a little bit and skid a little bit. Just a little a taste of it so they know what that feels like. You can always teach an edge, edge step whenever you want, right? So we can always teach them this, but why? Earlier when we were doing the, the, the nose to tail, so now when they go to do an edge step and they do this thing where they drag their tail, this thing, you go, hey, remember how I told you to pick up your whole board? Use your foot and turn it like this and the whole tail comes up, right? If they're doing a heel side edge step and they do this thing and then they're sliding down, remember we taught you this, pick up the tail too and they'll remember that feeling, right? So it all builds. But you don't need to teach an edge step unless you need to teach an edge step. Because from here, we could skate right over there. We could skid down to the flats. We could get on the chair. If we had a sweet bench over there, we could skate all the way over to the bench, practice getting off the bench a couple times, and hit the chair. Does that make sense? So they have every tool they need, and they just learned to fast plant 180. Foot plants, right? They can skate if, when they need to. It's a tool. It's not cool. It's just a tool, right? It's something that they use, right? Cool is something that they remember. It's something that stands out. It pops, right? From here, we go up to the top. We use the little, little bowl that's up there. You guys have like a natural bowl up there, and we teach them how to initiate turns, how to complete turns, how to traverse and then initiate and complete. We go through that whole route, and then we've got some interesting, inter interesting spaces to work with up there. The last thing we talked about, and this is part of this, this part of the training, is when we're on the beginner hill, when do we leave this chair? We shouldn't leave this chair before they're linking turns, right? And once they are linking turns, they should be able to pressure the finish phase of the turn. So that means they enter the turn, they glide through the fall line, then when they change edges, they can extend their legs and create pressure in a skidded, in a skidded maneuver. Does that make sense? Like that's what we want for them before they leave. We then teach them how to power stop and speed check. They are ready to go up on a different run. Because with those tools, they'll be able to make more powerful turns. They'll be able to vary the size and shape of the turns and play around with those things. If someone has a marginal toe and heel turn right here, they're probably not ready for Quicksilver. In an ideal world, in the first hour, they experience this stuff. They go up the chair. They experience the little things at the top. They do the two bank turns that they're going to build for you, right? First hour. They feel like snowboarders. They have a lot of successes under their belt, which means if you give them success before they fail, they'll come back for more. If they fail before they succeed, it's a crapshoot. If they get hurt before they succeed, it's failure, right? And I always used to tell my, my, my instructors at, at the Burton Snowboard Academy, I tell them that they have to be right on the first try every time. It's a lot of pressure, but I'd put that on them because it meant that if they took the time to think it through, they could make sure that whatever they're asking of their student was, was, was close enough to that student's ability level that they could be successful. And if they did that and they didn't fail, the student would trust them. The second the instructor fails the student, the student loses trust. About three tries where you, say, where you tell them to do the same thing and it doesn't work, they quit thinking you know what you're talking about. When you say something it doesn't work, take a step back, ask them why it didn't work. Did you not feel that thing that I was talking about? Okay, let's think of it this way. Let's change it up, right? So you got, you've got to, you got to be very closely in tune with them. The last thing that I want you guys to take away from today is, are the two concepts that I shared with these guys earlier, but um, actually with, you were there too, but the concept of flow and then the four kinds of fun. If we get our students in flow, and I'll explain what that is in a minute, and we're, and we're, met, and we're actually giving them opportunities to, to experience those four kinds of fun, then what will happen is, you got a good chance of keeping them engaged and re-engaging them. You got a great chance of empowering them because if they're in flow, they're, they're constantly learning, right? And they're constantly feeling more and more successful. And they're probably gonna be stoked and excited to come back. That's like the three E's. I've got like four F's and three E's and whatever else. The three E's, keep them engaged, 
I did this one first. Isn't that good? <laughs> um, empower them with, with skills that excite them and, and work towards their goals, right? And they'll be excited to come back. We do that, we win. So here's flow. Very simply, flow. Over here we got challenge, right? Over here we've got skill. In the middle where they meet, we're in, we're in the best opportunity to have a great experience. It's called being in flow. It's like when you make a perfect turn, you're like, and you don't even think about it, you just lose yourself in it. Or when you hit, you hit a jump and you stomp it and you're like, oh, and it feels so good, right? And you're not thinking about anything except for how good it felt, you're in flow, right? For our students, let's keep them, if this is flow going right up here, let's keep them just slightly challenged where they can do it, but they maybe haven't done it yet, right? So they're always taking that step and they're hungry for more, they're hungry for the next step. And this, is, this will help you understand that a little bit more. The four kinds of fun are very simple, right? We got easy fun or simple fun. That's like something anybody can do, right? Like tubing. You go tubing for a half an hour, you get bored, right? But in the first half hour, it's a blast, right? By the end of that half hour, you're asking the guy to spin you. You're trying to run and go faster. You, you wish there was a jump that you could hit. There's like a million. So it goes from easy fun to, to hard fun. And then it goes into people fun. So they got to feel connected to human beings, right? And then finally, if the, all those things are happening well, they'll hit this stage where the fun is about being the thing. I am a snowboarder. I buy the clothes. It's a part of my identity. I want to do this with my life. They hit that phase. All right, enough said. That's the flats. Let's go hit the lift. Okay, so what I do is I bring my student onto the slope, right? I have him tip back onto his heels a little bit for this one. Is that your front foot? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put my, my back foot under his board back towards the back foot right there. Go ahead and rest on my toe. Relax. You can smash my toe. You're not hurting me, right? It doesn't really hurt to have someone stand on your toe, right? But if you, this is one of my favorite ways to teach someone to initiate. It's so easy. So all I'm going to do now is remember the, the joysticks we talked about down below? So I want you to get low. Get low for me. Now tip that joystick forward. Now squish the tongue of that boot. Keep squishing. And see how he starts to pivot? Yeah. And now just glide into the fall line. Now squish that lead heel. Just keep squishing. That's what I want him to feel is that little pivot. I didn't make him do that, by the way. That was just pressure. The next thing I do, right, is I take my students two foot in. You guys can just simulate it. And I give them what, what I call a patience entry. You know, just like a patience turn. So you make them count like one or one, two, and then start to turn. So they learn to put weight on the front foot, glide into the fall line, then start their turn. Because what, what do most students do? The second they start pointing down the hill, they sit back and get scared and they try to force the turn, right? But if you teach them to be patient right here, so they go glide, count one, two, now start, heel, heel, and glide out. I'm hoping that they'll finish with a little traverse. If I can get them to be patient, then enter the turn, what it teaches them is once they initiate out on the hill, then they wait for a couple seconds, make sure they're balanced, then start the turn, they're gonna be fine. Because what, what do they have to do to finish the bottom of that turn? They gotta get weight on their front foot, and then they gotta finish with weight on both feet, right? What most people do when they get pointed down the fall line is they get on their back foot, and they can't finish the turn very well. Yeah, and you can, and you can do the fall line to finish a couple ways. You can get them to turn to a stop, or you can get them to turn to a glide, right? Turn to a traverse. I prefer, like, ideally, your students could turn to a traverse because that way when they get out there, they finish their turns moving across the hill, right? And then try it on their toes and just keep reinforcing it's the joysticks. Lead joysticks tips forward, then it squishes the lead tongue, then you squish the rear tongue to finish, right? So whatever the turn is, doesn't really matter. We're just going patient. So one, two, now squish, squish, and there I go. And if this is all they get, that's pretty awesome, <laughs> to be honest. Right? This is a nice little spot to do this. And then I bring him back up and I go, okay, this time let's just use pressure and be patient. And let's see if through pressure, right? You guys want to try something interesting? Let's see if pressure can make my snowboard turn. Because for darn sure it's not going to tip. Pressure. Oh, check it out. It turned. Balance on it. Get that. Yeah, it just engaged, right? You're turning. Right? So I want my students to feel that. More than anything else, sure a little bit. In here, here's what they learn. So if this, this is not a mini pipe, this is just a contained little environment, right? If they could just make it even a little more contained for you, that'd be great. And here they learn how to initiate a turn. They learn how to finish a turn. You teach them how to traverse and then enter. So if, if, I, were, if I had my student like right where John is, I'd push him across the hill this way, 
holding an edge, then I'd have them initiate the turn, glide a little bit, and then finish the turn, and then I'd push them back across the hill the other way. Now they just made like a big capital U. What they're gonna do out there? Do that both ways, and then get out of here, right? Now they, they can, if this were a mini pipe, I'd probably grab their hands and make them skid down into the flat bottom. I'd make them skid on their toes and their heels, give them both so they can do it. And then once I get everybody some hands-on support, then I'd be like, all right, climb back up there, do it yourself. And they'll learn how to bear crawl or they'll take one foot out and edge step, whatever, they just skate up, whatever. And people start making laps and they're skidding. They're learning how to skid on their own. They're trying it, right? Then they're trying. Then once they get the turning, all right, you got that turn, go try it over there. And I work with the next guy and I hold his hands. I'm like, all right, you got this. Now you try it on your own. I get the next guy and we get them all going until they're all motivated and hiking and, and sessioning this little mini pipe, learning how to stop on both edges, learning how to traverse on both edges, learning how to turn on both edges. They're ready to leave. They can snowboard. They can literally snowboard. They can completely 100% snowboard. They learn, they learn to enter low, yep. so get low, change edges, and push through the finish of the turn, right? They learn, because they learn, I'm assuming that they can already traverse and, and they're, they're linking very basic turns. But before, once they can do those basic turns, we don't go right away. We then reinforce and go, okay, let's teach them to get low, change, push through the finish. Then let's teach them how to do some speed checks where they can just right back to straight line. And then let's teach them how to do uh, some power stops so that if they feel like they're getting out of control, they know how to put it on a hard edge and come to a complete stop on both edges. They learn those things, they're ready to go out on the mountain. For the most part, right? Go ahead and buckle in. So we're gonna play around with that low change push concept. And by the way, this concept is the number one reason why people fail in level two and three exams. If, you, if any of you ever decide you wanna go that route. It's because most instructors show up really unable to make a retraction based turn or a lowest at edge change turn where then they create pressure by extending the legs in the in the belly of the turn right so i'll show you what that looks like we'll play around with it here you guys share it with your students and the other instructors on staff let this be like a kind of a core focus because if you think about it probably some of your best feeling pow turns are the ones where you get all low and then right in the belly of the turn you just like drive your legs out and throw snow like that's the sensation what happens when you do that you drive create all that pressure your board loads up and then it snaps back to you that's the retraction right we load it we release it and retract load the board release and retract that's that high-end turn that uh that most like top level snowboarders can do, right? And it's not, it's not like there's a perfect turn. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is to be able to show that movement pattern shows that you can go into the trees and rip hard turns in the trees, or you can go in the bumps, or you can ride power, whatever. Like that's that, that short radius, those, that dynamic kind of movement that, that if you don't have it, right, then you're probably not gonna ride very well when it gets gnarly. Make sense? All right, so here's what it looks like. Let's, uh, if I were just starting right here, Right, I had my students and I was gonna do this one. All I would say is first we get low before we let go of the edge. So I don't move my edge, I don't move my board, I don't twist or steer until after I get low. So I get low, now I can steer my board, right? When I'm here and I go fully onto the edge, I create pressure into the turn. Try one of those and come to a stop. So get low, steer the board, be patient, wait for it, wait for it, now pressure it. That's the turn I'm looking for right there. So I always, tell, I always tell my riders when I'm training them that I want them to be hungry for a sensation. Just standing up really quick, that creates a, a movie. We don't want that. I want you guys to actually extend your legs so that it creates a feeling in your snowboard where you're feeling that resistance, right? That, that skidding, like sort of slashing resistance. So like when I do it here, if I just stand up and turn, that's nothing, right? I just stood up and turned. Versus if I get here, right, and I wait for it, and there's a moment right about here, I can feel my board like buttering and, and pushing away from me. It's a good feeling. Yeah, that's the feeling. There's energy in, in that that builds up. So eventually, we get into this, right? We push through that turn, right? And then we glide and we release it and start the next one. We push into it and then we start the next one. We push into it, and we start the next one. We are pumping through our turns. 
The cool thing about snowboarding is that even though it's flat out here, if you pressure through the turn, it's just like pumping a bowl corner on a skateboard. If, you, if you've ever done that, like the sensation of pumping a bowl corner on a skateboard is sick, right? It feels so good. We get that same feeling when we do that in every one of our turns. It's a sensation that like feels like flying. So why do it? Because it's friggin' fun. The next thing I want to show you guys is basically for my first experience with students when I'm walking them through or riding with them, I've gotten this, I've gotten in this habit of holding back in every foot. The technique I like to use is, you know, can I use you? So I get over here in front of me, so what I become, once you start to go down the hill, is I just the anchor. And I go, all right, just let your board go straight down the hill and just relax. Now let's go to your heels a little bit. So feel your heels. And you, what you want, what you don't want to do is pull their arm back into an arm bar. So try to try to take that pressure off by pushing this hand forward and put your hand on his shoulder. This is a really, like, if you have one person and you want to accelerate the process, it's a pretty cool way to do it. That's what I was just saying, yeah, with a, a group, probably. With a group, take your board off, run one across, make a turn. Run. So grab his back hand again, make him point straight down the hill and just hold him. Now stop him, fully stop him. You got to stop. Okay, good. Now you guys are working together. Now right here, tell him to tip his lead joystick forward. And now hold that position. Now make your turn. He's no longer back foot. So you can show him how to get on that front foot, right? By tipping that joystick forward and then start your move, right? Okay, so I'm gonna slow him down. Now when I do this, go ahead and go to your heels a little bit. So I'm just gonna come in here like this. So I'm right on him. And then I let him go. And I go, okay, now give me your front hand. And we finish. So I just transition hands. See that? Come on, try it. So when I do this, I gotta let go with this hand. Yeah. Go ahead and start turning to your heels. We'll just go to your heels real gentle. And now I move in right behind him and I'm here. See that little move? Yeah. I got him, I can grab his coat. Okay. I'm here. Coat then. Yep. Right, so you gotta make sure you learn to, you learn the dance, right? It's changing hands, right? Yep. And then you're, you're always staying on your heels. Never go to your toes. Right. You, you know, try one more time. Never go to your toes with this. So then eventually you just start letting go of their hands and staying close to them. So like you move in behind them when they're on their toes and, or whatever, you know, you get in position, but you just, you stay close to them. So like if you were making your first turns, I wouldn't be back here, right? You're like, as you're going to your toes, like you just switch to your toes. I'm like, I'm right here. Oh, you got this good. Get low, hold that pressure. And then as you go to your heels, you turn around your heels and I'd be right back here behind you. Be like, all right, you got this. I might touch you a little bit. Be like, you got this. You totally got this. I'll give you a little touch just so you know that I'm there, right? Only to, and, and before you ever touch, ask if it's okay and only touch in appropriate places, right?